All right, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on Hard Justice. Uh, as I said before, I did not order this pay-per-view, did not pay money for it, and having seen what went down on Sunday, I'm kind of glad about that. It wasn't a waste of my time, but I probably would have felt like it was a waste of my money. Uh, was it better than Victory Road? Yeah. I mean, it would almost have to be, wouldn't it? You know, at least this month we got two X Division matches, which is two more than we had on that pay-per-view. Uh, speaking of which, we started off with the Steel Asylum match, uh, Motor City Machine Guns, Lethal Consequences, Daniels, Suicide, Amazing Red, and D'Angelo De Niro. Uh, really a, a great opener. You know, these matches are always a lot of fun to watch, and this was no exception. You know, tons of exciting athletic spots. It was great to see the guns back on back in the ring, and Elijah Burke, I thought, did a pretty good job in his debut. You know, the X Division can always be counted on to, to deliver in these types of big spot fest matches. Unfortunately, that's all these guys get to do a lot of the time, deliver a lot of action to pop the crowd at 8 p.m. Now, the last time they did the Steel Asylum was a Bound for Glory last year. Uh, Jay Lethal went over and won a title shot, and then they just threw his title shot away on impact a few weeks later in a three-minute squash. Now, I assumed this was going to be the same deal, which is why I wasn't too excited about it. But this time, they wised up. They said the winner gets his title shot at no surrender. Daniels wins, so now we have Christopher Daniels versus Samoa Joe at no surrender. Awesome. Now, I would rather they save that for Bound for Glory, but I guess they've got something else in mind. Uh, Joe versus Homicide for the X Division title. You know, a, a good match while it lasted. A little bit underwhelming for me. I, I really wish they could have gotten five or ten more minutes, but I didn't really expect them to get much time in the first place since the match was barely promoted on TV at all. And, oh, and besides, if they had gotten that extra time, then Jethro Holiday wouldn't have had a pay-per-view spot. Because if Hard Justice needed one thing, it was Jethro Holiday. Abyss versus Jethro Holiday. Um, I really don't have anything to say about it. Just a waste of ten minutes. For God's sake, let this be the end of the Dr. Stevie feud. Hernandez versus Rob Terry. Uh, Hernandez wins in a couple seconds, his push to the top of the card continues. Exactly what should have happened. No one wanted to see Rob Terry, aka the British A1, in a pay per view length match. Uh, Beer Money versus the British Invasion. You know, pretty decent match. You know, these teams work well together. There was nothing really out of the ordinary, and Brutus Magnus seemed to be having an off night for some reason, but it wasn't bad. You, know, you, you knew the second it started that Eric Young was going to get involved somehow, but aside from that, I didn't really have any complaints. Um, Angelina versus ODB for the knockouts title. At, at, at some point during the week, this became an intergender tag match for the knockouts title. I don't know how that happened, why it happened, or when it happened, but I think it's a pretty safe bet whose idea it was. Um, I think pretty much everyone is ranted about this until they're blue in the face. I don't really know if I have anything to add that hasn't been said already. ODB is the champion because her cartoon character boyfriend pinned the champion's tag team partner, which is probably the biggest bullshit way she could have possibly won the title. The match was a joke. Just a bunch of lame, misogynistic attempts at comedy. Then Diener says that he's the women's champion and runs off with the belt, so it looks like this trash is going to continue for a while, unfortunately. This, this was just awful, for so many reasons. And it's, it's really strange that Dixie Carter said just recently how she's very proud of the knockouts division and it's very important to her that they get represented properly, but then she signs off on something like this. Are, are you kidding me? Are you still proud of the knockouts division after this match, Miss Carter? I wouldn't be. Crap like this makes your whole women's roster look like a sideshow attraction. The ODB winning the belt this way was a complete joke, and Angelina losing the belt this way was just a slap in the face to her. I, I absolutely hated this. <clears throat> uh, Team 3D versus Booker T and Scott Steiner. I'll, I'll, I'll give Scott Steiner credit for the effort he put in. He didn't half-ass it, and he did more than I thought he would. I didn't expect him to take the bumps he took. So, this was more than what I expected, 
but bear in mind I was expecting nothing. So not quite the snooze fest most of us thought it would be, but it still wasn't that great, and the finish was retarded. Nash versus Foley for the Legends title, same thing. It'll be more memorable than it would have been because of how bloody it got, but take out all the blood, and how good was that match? You know, I, I like the Abyss thing at the end. I like that, but they're probably just setting him up to job to Nash at No Surrender so Nash can collect the $50,000 bounty from Stevie, from Stevie Richards. So I have, I have no faith that that's going anywhere good. Uh, Kurt Angle versus Sting versus Matt Morgan for the world title. Um... Pretty good main event, all things considered. I was I was happy with it. You know, I, I think we all expected Matt Morgan to Matt Morgan to do the job here, but what really surprised me was that it wasn't Sting who pinned him. You know, definitely a shock that Kurt Angle retained, just because. I mean, with with the Rocket Con situation and Angle possibly looking at jail time in the near future, not to mention all the negative publicity that's going to come out of that, it just. It just seemed really unwise to keep the belt on Kurt Angle, regardless of what the creative plans were. I mean, I know he hasn't been convicted of anything yet, but still, this feels like a decision that TNA might regret before too long. So, for Hard Justice, we had a solid main event, uh, good action from the X Division, a fairly decent tag match for the New Japan titles, and that's about it. So, now that this pay-per-view is in the books, let's talk about where they're going. At No Surrender, we got Christopher Daniels versus Samoa Joe. Big markout match right there. Thank you. We're probably going to have Kurt Angle versus Matt Morgan. I'm cool with that. That'll be a good main event. But then I expect we're going to have Abyss getting jobbed out to Grandpa Nash. Um, probably ODB versus Tracy Brooks. And I expect both will be pretty awful. A month after that, we have Bound for Glory, biggest pay-per-view of the year for TNA. The Hard Justice match was billed as Sting's last shot at the world title, and he lost. So Sting cannot be in the main event of Bound for Glory this year, thank God. So take Sting out of the equation, and it it has to be Kurt Angle defending against AJ. They, they had the tease for AJ and Sting's promo at Hard Justice. It's really the only match that makes sense at this point. Um, the way things are right now, I mean, it, it has to be either AJ, Matt Morgan, or Hernandez. I, I, th I think they're going to have Matt Morgan face Sting in his last match. Hernandez, I think his time is coming up before too long, but not at Bound for Glory. Please, TNA, give us Angle and AJ at Bound for Glory. You're probably going to make us suffer through Nash, Steiner, and Booker T matches on that pay-per-view, and the fans deserve the most awesome main event possible to make up for that. Uh, check out blogtalkradio.com backslash QCW radio. I made another appearance on episode 41. I will talk to you guys after impact, hopefully. I'm having a lot of computer issues once again, so I don't know. I'll try to be as punctual as the machine lets me. See ya.